at that time, it's fair, we were doing well, had a caravan in Anstruther and all that. Been a pal appeared up at the pub, uh, Mick Keeley, for Shittles and I knew him for being in Berlin. I was in for a shooting at the time, I got away with it. I was expecting 10 year, and uh, Mick got 10 year for, for this post office. So he went up to shots, and he was only up shots uh, 10 months, and he escaped in a butcher van. He's the only guy to this day that's actually escaped. When people say they escaped from prison, open prisons, you just walk out, but shots is a high security prison, whereas it's hard to get out. But Mick went out in the van, and he was away, and he turned up at the pub this day. <laughs> After just escaping? No, he, he, was, he was away for about a year, uh -huh. a year and a half. And he'd come back, he'd been in Germany and England, everywhere, you know what I mean? And uh, he's quite a smart character, Mick. And he came up and he says, listen, he says, I've been in Turkey, he says, I'm mine a bank up, six million pounds. Would you be interested? And I went, aye, of course I would. But uh, I says, is it a go? He says, well, I'm going to get away for a couple of months, get everything sorted out and I'll be back to see you. Well, they came back to see me. He just walked in the door and my answer was I. Because I always wanted to, by the age of 30, I wanted to be a millionaire, James. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always wanted to go to Marbella, open up my nightclub. You must have been close, but in at that age. Well, at that age, I was doing no bad, but I thought I'd get away with that turn. I was doing turns at the time for 100,000, a couple of hundred grand, you know what I mean? And uh, But two and three wee splits. But I was always a spender, James. I, I'm, I've been a nightclub guy for I was 17 years of age for I came out to Boston and I was always I was always spent for the day in case you're not here the morning. Do you think you spent a lot but because there was a good chance you might have been back in the jail do you think you were trying to enjoy it as much as you can? Or, or unless I get killed. Aye, aye. That, that's, that, that was the, the reason because always uh, people always used to say it and still say how did you know I used to say money and say, how did you know just put a lot by I used to say I was the opinion I might be dead tomorrow. Aye. Hop by a bus or freaking out. <laughs> Whatever. So, but, Mick, so I, I've agreed to that. And uh, me and his brother went down. We, we, we left for Glasgow. We were going down to Torquay. It was down at Torquay. This was May 1991. I was I was just thinking we turned 30. I had a, a young boy at the time, he just turned two. He was born in uh, Stockpile in 89. And uh, we were staying in Crow Hill Road at the time, up at Spam Valley, mm -hmm. as I told you. Did you know why they called it Spam Valley? No Briggs? fella snobs and... Uh, because uh, they were saving... Thing they were eating Spam so they could pay their mortgage. Aye. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So aye, everybody kept on. Aye, aye. <laughs> so that, that's what they called it. <laughs> and... Uh, so I, I says, fuck it, get a go, you know what I mean? N never thinking I was going to be caught. Never, never, not not one second. So me and Mick's brother, we were designated to take the guns, balaclavas, handcuffs, down to Torquay. So we jumped in the, he came to meet me, we had the two bags, we jumped in a private taxi, and we says, don't go to Central, we're in the train. So we went to Motherwell, we were going through Strathclyde Park. And uh, before you know it, the fucking police, it's a motor outrider. He's waving the fucking taxi down. And I says to my pal, I went, fucking hell. I says, what do you mean? Down here, I says, we're getting a nick already. But the guy just went like to taxi driver, slow down, mate, you're going too fast. So I went, thank fuck. So we got to Motherwell, go to London. We were walking about the fucking Houston station. We guns not at the police or the other place. And I think we jumped to Trinity Exeter. And Mick and the other boys met us there, they'd stolen cars and that, and took in, had a hired car and a false ID and all that. So they took us back and says, look, we're, we're, we're basing ourselves on a caravan site. And uh, we're basing a car in, caravan site painting. There's a uh, painting in Torquay. There's three main places. There's painting Torquay in Brixham, Vic, Brixham's a fishing village. So we're based there and uh, I ended up I ended up getting Sheila done and we moved to, uh, just to, uh, to the seaside thing we, into a chalet. She came down with the rain and uh, her plan was, Sheila used to be married to an Iranian. Her plan was to go down to London once 
I thought it was getting a million pound. We were going to get into London. She was going to get into a bank safety deposit box, speak her in, and she stayed there for six years, put the money in, up to Glasgow. Then off, that was the sort of a plan. And uh, But Mick, while he was on the run, he met these two lasses. And uh, he, met, he met this lassie, sorry, in London. And uh, her name was Sandrine Baby. And she had a sister called Natalie Baby. They came from Mount, Mount Pelia in France. So Mick says after a few days when we were down there, he went, I'm going to get a thing with that lassie from France out here to blend in as tourists. I went, for fuck's sake. I says, what are you going to tell her? He says, tell her to she might come for a holiday. <laughs> it's just, and, and she phoned me, she says, can I bring my, my sister, uh, thing me, Sandrine, I think it was, and he was going, aye. So there was, she came down, and there was another boy, Tam Carrigan, Tam Harper there. And uh, we were going to put the, we were going to put the pub and all that, but while we were there, we were reconnaissing the bank, and at that time in ninety one, they never had alarms in the in the bank. They just an alarm in the vault, and this was a holding centre for the Nat West, either Thurla Devon. So they reckon there was six million pound there. So our plan was to break into it, hold them up, take the money, and go. You know what I mean? So. But for that two weeks, we were just acting as normal tourists. Fuck, I even went to the zoo with the Wayne and, with the Wayne and fucking the missus. Uh -huh. And we went to this sports centre and fucking we were in there and we tried to play badminton or I couldn't play it. But years later, I became an internationalist in the fucking neckwear. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, so it came to D-Day. But two days before it, I'd been out in the car with Tam Carrigan and Robert Harper. And we get pulled with the coppers. We'd sweet your rappers and we threw them out the fucking windy. Copper pulled us who are you? And I gave my brother Gary's name. So we get back, we told Mick, James and that. And uh, Tam and Rab went, we've got a bad feeling about this. He says, we're getting off. I went, for fuck's sake, you can't do it. So, so they, these two boys got off and uh, it left us to go through with the robbery. So they were away and the robbery the back door was drilled to get in the back door and there was a inside at the back of the bank it was a big bank there was three flares and uh, in the back of the bank there was a like a holding centre and a, a staircase and you could see the vault so there was a stair at the bottom of the staircase there was a hidey hole constructed where you could fit inside it know what I mean but I was doing there the first night and there was a pool table and all the rest of it. And contrary to contradictions, I would like to put this straight. A lot of people say, no, you were saying you were in the bank, blah, 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 blah. But I'll tell you now, anybody that's listening, I wasn't in the bank when the bank got raided. When Mick came up to the pub, he says, Ian, he says, I'll make it easy for you. He says, see if you agree to it. He says, I can trust you 100%. He says, I know you're in the bank, they bother says, but will you sit outside in the car? Because I know you'll no go away. I went, so you want, so you want me to sit in the car? I says, I. I went, hi. I was shocked at that. I was mm. quite willing to get in the bank. Thanks, it's an easier. Oh, an easier job. But mm. I was, so I would have went anyway. So, But other people have been saying that I was saying, oh, I was in the bank. I was in, but to put it straight to yourself, James, I was in the bank first night when it broke into, right? There was no alarms in the in the bank there was upstairs the pool tables for the bank to I think there was about 18 staff in there they used to get up there for lunch break so we'd play pool and all that and the, the hidey hole got constructed and the remote the thing with dustpan and all the fucking dirt and that away so once that was done I went back I went out the bank and I went back to the caravan site where my missus was and the two French lasses, he don't know what's happening. Mick name says, we're about somewhere. So they went to bed. So I went back, and I was to go back to the bank about half seven. So outside, it's half seven, eight or seven. It was just after eight or seven. And uh, funny enough, I was watching the TV in the the caravan. Guess what I was watching? The Sweeney. Mm -hmm. Kids were doing a bank. Uh, bank robbery. <laughs> so I'm lying there, like, I'm going, for fuck's sake, I'm going, 
It's time to order. I can be a fucking millionaire. No, I will be a millionaire. Only fools and horses. I will be a fucking millionaire. No, I mean. Because when you do things like that, you don't expect to get caught. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you can't get me that frame. No, like they two boys that have left, they've got feeling. I'm off. I'll tell you, there was a good story about they two as well. What happened mm -hmm. after it? But, but they done know what I mean. They just didn't fuck about and say we're away. But uh, so is this eight o'clock at night? This is at eight o'clock in the morning. This is right. eight o'clock, half eight in the morning. And they're in the bank. They're in the bank. They they were into the hiding. Were they hole. playing pool or that in the bank? Is that aye, right? Aye, playing pool upstairs and all that. <laughs> Why were they ready to rob it the next aye, day? Aye, it was freaking. <laughs> that's unbelievable. And uh, so they went and put their cell in uh, the hiding hole. So the first plan was if the other boy wouldn't have fucked off, when the door, the, the door, the first person that came in, right, he, there was a system, a rotor where when he was in, the next person in the bank had turned up, pressed the bell, he'd open the door and bring him in. So everything changed because the other two boys went away, Carrigan and Harper. Uh, the plan was then just let them all come in then jump out and gather them up because what they were going to do is go to the door, first person come in, then you go and just pull them in, tie them up. So at the end of the day, there was about 16 people tied up, gun pointed at them and all that. Right. Now what they done is the see for the hidey hole. They saw the, the thing with opening the, the vault and they've come out with a trolley. So the boys jumped out, right in. But th th this bank vault, you went into it, then there was another gate, and that took you up to the treasury rail gate, and all the cash was sitting there. And they uh, ran back out and like, where's the fucking money? Where's the key for this? So the manager, I think his name was Brian something, he was trying to say, look, listen, see the guy that's got the key, Roy, the chief cashier, he's late for his work. So, weren't they having all that? Just, just thought they were playing fucking past the parcel. So, a shotgun got fired, and it's always been says in the newspapers and all that, and you know, stories come up that there was a woman shot in the head. That's what I heard. Aye, well, th th this is, this is there's a, there's a wee bit true to that, but the the, the shotgun was fired into the ceiling as a warning. Just don't fucking about. The plaster came down, hit this young lass in the head, and they were all screaming, "She's been shot." That that's that's the honest truth. So nobody died. Ne nobody died. Uh, years later, James, I'll tell you. Later, actually, the Turkey Herald, when when the thing came up with the bomb and the slashing with me, they they'd heard about it down there, and, and through a journalist got in touch, could even talk about the the bang, and would he be willing to apologise to the the lassie and putting them all through, and I I done that story. But anyway, what what happened was. Uh, the boys thought that the manager and that the, the manager declared his cell and he got ran into the fucking bars, shotgun, get put his head, open that fucking vault and he's shouting, I can't, I can't, I've no key. So guns went down and uh, by that time, fucking the doorbell was ringing. It was Roy, the chief cashier, and the manager was trying to say, look, let me go to the door. I'll open the fucking door and that's that. But see, see when we went to court, it was like a comedy error. Most of the staff was saying, see, because of your accents, mm -hmm. they were saying it was Jamaicans. <laughs> 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 they said they were Italian, Jamaicans, this and that. Mm -hmm. and so the boys just ran out in the car, away, so got back to the caravan site. So how did you not open the door to let him in if that was a guy with the keys to the vault? We, we didn't believe him. Was it the guy with the boat? It was, it was him as well. And that, you know he, I mean? he said six million. Aye, Could aye. you see the six million? Aye, you could see the six million in, through the bars, you know what I mean? Fuck's sake. It was in the nest of the vault. And uh, that, that's what the guy kept saying, this guy, Brian, the manager, look, that'll be Roy, the chief, he'll have this key. But at this time, just thought, I need bother. So the boys ran out, in the car, I think Mickey made his own way down. So back to the caravan site we were, I went in, my missus like, where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> I went, no go on it. She went, fuck. So Mick came back, we're all, just, we're all gutted, came into my caravan, I went, look, he says, I'll need your link to these two two French lasses and tell, say to them, look, you just need to leave, I'll get them the fucking train and whatever. 
he says, listen, if we go to tell you, we would excess stuff, because the other two boys went away, mm -hmm. we would excess stuff that had to be fucking done away with, and Mick says he'd done that, but it hadn't been done. So me and his brother says, right, we'll get rid of it. So Sheila kept saying, like, you better get to fuck this. See, because we never get the money, James. I just, I was sitting blasé saying, we'll get the money. It's not going to be a big inquiry. Deflated. But there's been a fucking gunfire and Aye. fuck knows what, and mm -hmm. it's been broken or planned and all the rest of it. So it's just still as serious as it's just, it's no just getting to the money. It's just the same. I had that attitude, you know, just she's going, let's go, and I'm going, make a breakfast and all that, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of just fucking off to London and that right away, we were going to go with tickets to get in the train. So me and James Healy went with these, went up to his caravan, got the two bags, but little did we know that seeing we'd seen they'd come out in the bank, they'd saw them jumping into the car, and we'd switched, they took the plate, and we swapped into another car. And uh, this guy, he was a painter and decorator, and he gave the, the registration number, but it wasn't the right one, and he had to compose the number and the go it. And it was a, a car that Mick Keeley had rented out in a false a false name. And uh, and it was thing we'd do at the caravan site. So two coppers arrived in at the caravan site when me and James they were just taking these two bags there was three big ponds, it was massive as site. We says, we'll just go down there and ditch them there, then we'll go up to camp and get to fuck. So as me and uh, James were walking down to the site, uh, down to this pond, he says to me, I think we're getting folded. I went, I says, nah, don't be silly. So we go to this pond, open the two zips of the whole girls to throw the stuff in. You know what I mean, there were screwdrivers and all that, drills, there was excess fucking handcuffs and all that. And, uh, Flares and all that. So the next minute, some cunts just jumped through the bushes and we like that. Right, get down the fucking deck. My whole world just fucking be like that. I mean, who the fuck's he? It was a guy, he was about six feet four, he had a leather jacket. He was holding to me, it looked like a 45 or a Magnum. And I says to James, I says, look, I says, don't fucking move us, can't shoot us, right? So see, see when we're lying down there, he's come down, James, to put the cuff on. Mm -hmm. But he's not put mine's on right. Mm -hmm. he's cuffed us two together so he was a big cunt so he opened the bags he fingered with the bags put me the shooters and he had the gun and he says right you used to get up to the caravan you came for so we were going up to the caravan we came for and they went like that no get into that one he'd been in observers, uh, uh, observing us only for about half an hour how unlucky was that know what I mean so a copper knew that was used and he just bumped into you by accident no, what happened is that they'd went to the site, see after the bank robbery uh -huh. and all that, about an hour later, they'd been to the site because this motor, had, uh, the hired car we had, you know what I mean, under a different name, that was the thing we'd booked into the site, and they came to the site and they says to the site manager, there's any dodgy characters, blah, 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 and he says, oh, there's a group of people here for Glasgow, there's one got a scar, this was the other boy carrying, blah, 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 and the car was there, so they set up thing me, but they couldn't see when they saw us walking. They could they, they couldn't see their their their, their radios, mm -hmm. their radios because were how weren't were they working? Any signal. So one of them says, "I'll follow them. You go and get back up." So the time this guy arrested us, he said, "We're walking up and we're going fuck. Make sure we've got to do that stuff." So he put us into this caravan where they'd been. What the fuck? So see instead of the guy, he went into caravan. He's a gun on his weird cuffed, and he says, Right, shut all the curtains. And instead of coming and sitting in with us, right, this all happened quick. He stood outside, and I'm sitting and I'm going like that. Fucking can't believe this. We're going to be 18 fucking years for this. So I'm sitting the next minute, my cuff just came up. <laughs> and I went, Fuck this. <laughs> there was people walking by, and they were, we could look out. We could open the, the curtain a wee bit, and we could see he's stoning with the bags and his leather jacket, and he's, he's gun in his pocket. But people were going like that. He and me, what are you doing standing there? He's like, get away, get away, I'm the police and all of that, mm -hmm. right? And he was turning his back. And I says to my pal, the next time he turns his back, I says, I'm going for this living room right along the hall and out that back window. He went, you'll get shot. I says, I don't give a fuck. But this time I'd only done 18 months. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying... This was your biggest sentence. Oh, th this, this this was going to be fucking 18 year, 20 year. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'd done. I says, you come and he went, Oh, I don't know, I don't know. I says, well, I'm going. 
So anyway, I got out, out the window. The whole fucking caravan was shaking. My pal was telling us after it. But the copper's back was turned. He was talking to somebody. So he never saw this. And I, I'd get the cuff off. I ran up to my caravan. Sheila's there with the wind. I says, I've just escaped, blah, 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 blah. And I'd a tracksuit jacket on. I put another one on. I says, look, you make your way down to London and I'll get you in there. I says, I need to get to fuck. But I didn't know where I was going. So I've ran down to the painting with, with, with the beach, down to the beachfront. Mm -hmm. And I'm storing with a pound on his gun. I shouldn't be having a million pound here instead of a pound. And, uh, and I went, where the fuck am I going to go for here? So, no money on his, no not for Torquay. You get a Glasgow, it's a big fucking ask, in it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> With a knicker on you. And the police are all going to cut, come through them shortly. So I've crawled up to this embankment, this railway, before you know there's a helicopter up. And my missus, she was telling us after it, she was going with the pram, and she saw James Seeley in the car. He never looked at her, you know what I mean? And she made her way to the train station, went down to Fingway, to Houston, went down to Elephant Castle. Uh, we'd relatives down there through, through my brother's wife so I made my way to this Bricksam fishing village crawling and fuck knows what I went on the phone a couple of good pals told them what happened they says right listen they says we're going to go into the phone come back doing this says I've no money to record it and uh, went on the phone they says look somebody's going to be doing it at 12 o'clock they're coming for London. Can you hang on in there? This was fucking two in the afternoon. I said, fuck, aye. So I just went and I sat fucking in this woodland was and just lying about there. So I've creeped out at 12 o'clock and I see this boy, you know, mm -hmm. and he's sweating like fuck. I wouldn't see his name. And he's like, ah, and I've jumped in. And he's like, ah, fucking hell. He says, what happened there? I says, oh, go ask. So I went back to his house. He stayed in Kensington. And, eh, uh, we're sitting there and we're having a couple of joints. It was about five in the morning by this time. We went like, he says, look, I'm fucked. He says, if you're fucked, going up. See, thing me, I hadn't even saw his wife yet. He says, going up to that room. He says, and, uh, he says, just sleep up there. He says, no, see you in the morning. He says, he says, I'm going to stay here and just another couple of joints. So, a couple of hours later, I'm, I'm fucking getting shaked about. And I... I thought it was his pals playing a fucking thing we wind up. You know what I mean? They're going, ah, drug squad, drug squad. Oh, what? what? He went, who are you? And I went, I'm Gary McDonald's, my brother's name. And uh, I've, I've ended up saying, saying uh, I says, what are you doing here? I says, well, I'm just in here looking for work. I says, I went to school with the boy and all that, blah, 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 blah. He's put me up, blah, 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 blah. And they went, have you ever been in trouble, Gary? And I went, I uh, eat a year for slashing the guy's throat. So they says, oh, aye, typical fucking gorbals. That's what they all hang down there. Aye. Everybody's all chim men for mm -hmm. the gorbals and that. So I gave his date a buff and all that. And uh, they were more interested in him because this boy, I think, he was dealing drugs down there. So while you were in his house, his doors went in? His doors went for in. For drugs? For, for eight in the morning. <laughs> he, he he was under observation getting fucking thing with you know, meeting these, Tur these Turks in the West End and all that. But I didn't know this, and he didn't know his... He says his house had never been fucking turned out before or nothing. So I heard them outside. I'm in the room, I heard them outside the room. Go, oh, no, they went, didn't he him? And, I, and I, they were like, oh, it's his name, and he played it right. He went, I'm no fucking telling you his name. Kicking in my fucking door and all that. So I'd say it's Gary McDonald's, my brother's name. And uh, that, that, that's, it worked out fine, because if he'd have says a name... Mm -hmm. You're fucked. I'm fucked. So he played it right. He just says, no, get to fuck. No, that. So they took him away, James, and they were like, me. they came into me and they were like, ah. they says, eh, look, we've just decided. They says, just going to let you go, blah, 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 blah. And eh, I'm like, ah, thank fuck I never stole that on cuff on me. Aye. So he's went away. I went down the stair and his wife's there. She's seven months pregnant. And it's the first time I'd met her. And I says to her, I went, I says, for fuck's sake, I says, long have you been here? She says, we've just been here 18 months, no been to pause. I says, the night, this is happened, the robbery and all the rest of it. So I says to her, I says, look, I says, how do you get to the Elephant Castle? She says, I'll show you. And she went like, she says, there's a hundred pound, which was good, her, I say. Aye. And she took me to the one of the stations. So I got off at the Elephant Castle. 
it's a big roundabout now, as you remember. It was in the jail years later, and this boy, uh, there was a pub, Charlie Chapman, he used to say, hi, Charlie Chapman, I says, hi, how'd you get there? And I was telling him. So I met this this guy there, one of the relatives, for my brother's missus' side. They took me up with these high flats, the Elephant Castle, and my missus was there. And the guy says, look, do you want to stay here for a week? I says, no, I says, I need to go up the road, I've got unfinished business, meaning I've got enemies, I'm going to fucking take them out. So Is that because you knew you were going to get a heavy sentence? Aye, aye, and just then I was just fucking nuts in it, fair, you know what I mean? Had a lot of trouble, you know, I'd been done with a lot of shootings and all that and different things, you know what I mean? Been on remand in Berlin and that for it. Unfortunately, I, I got away with it, it was just the wee ones I was getting done with. Mm. And uh, a couple of robbery things came up, but nothing came with them. But uh, so, got up on that train journey with me, the missus, and the, the boy. He was only two at the time. It was one of the saddest freaking journeys going up there because I knew I was nicked. Because eventually, got me see when I wrote the caravan one day. DNA. My prints were there. So, the goat is for that and, and other things. So, I got off at Motherwell again, met a couple of pals. Took me back to the house in Hamilton, gave me that, gave us a, a revolver with six dumb dumb bullets for maximum impact. And for five weeks I was running about the town and I was going to shoot cunts. Oh, but it's the truth, I was just going to fuss over them. I'd have just shot them in the street. But unfortunately that never happened. So five weeks after that, I hadn't saw the missus and uh, the police done a raid in my mass house. And uh, this is May 91. And uh, they were kidding on it was a, a drugs offence for Alan, but what they done is the thing when they bugged the phone and I was on the phone to Sheila. She'd moved from Bishop Briggs into my mass to stay. The house was still in Bishop Briggs and uh, but she'd just moved in there to stay and I'd phoned and I says, right, I'll meet you. So we arranged to meet at the post San Chinese restaurant. So I went down there first. It was a Tuesday, I always remember, it was a Tuesday night and uh, I've got the gun in my pocket and all that. I'm sitting there and she came in. The first thing I says to her, I says, Have you been folied? She went, Don't be silly. I went, I didn't need bother. Two minutes later, a couple came walking in, sat at the next table. I went, Undercover coppers. She went, Oh, there you're starting all this paranoia again. You start this, I'm going to leave. I went, What the fuck did you expect me to do? I'm fucking on the run, I'm going to get about 20 fucking year. I just knew these two were coppers, right? But there was six guys sitting there, James, right? And they were going, oh, well done, your driving licence and all that. They were six coppers, I know. But I must I must give freaking praise to the police that night. Instead of just lifting me, they left me there for three years. So I went like that. If I got the back door, got the front door, I says, I know they're out there. I just knew. So they left us for three years. I got told Mick Healy was coming in. And... Uh, I just fucking started drinking three quarters dinner the last supper, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and at 11 o'clock, you could see all these people coming in for takeaways at this post and going out for a Tuesday mm -hmm. night. It was busy, but it was all the, it was called the, the Scottish Crime Squad mm -hmm. then. It's a serious crime squad now. But uh, Scottish Crime Squad, they were made up with police officers from Aberdeen and Dean, all that came down. And uh, it was all them coming in to have a look. So they made a move and uh, Sheila's were like, look at all these guys and that coming into this restaurant. And I've turned around. Some fucking 15 people are rushing in. Mm -hmm. They've put my one in my pocket to get the gun. I didn't know who they were. See the couple, the lovely couple, I call them. They two were the first guns that jumped right into Opus. Know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And fucking uh, the six guys that bring me, they've ran here. They've got her doing, they've got me. The other people that came in, there must have been about 20 of them. They had me up in the air and I'm going blue. I'm going, for fuck's sake. I says, there's no need for this. And my name's gone. He's got a gun. Took the gun. I've thing me down. I've took the bullets. And I'm going blue. The wee Chinese guy thing me. If it wasn't so serious, it would, it would be laughable, but it is now. He can run there in the way like that while I'm up there and he's going, who's paying this bill? <laughs> and at this, the, at this the Scottish <laughs> Crime Squad, they kind of relax my grip. Uh -huh. Nudges me like that. Boop, boop, boop. So it was one of the momentous moments in my criminal career, and one of the saddest. <laughs> Me putting sick of the Scottish <laughs> crime squads, uh, and the thing me, the saddest, took away in handcuffs. Mm 